hey guys welcome back to the channel <laughs> if you are new here welcome and thanks for joining and if you're returning to express thank you for being amazing if you are new here do well to hit the subscribe button it's actually a wonderful place to be it's a fun place to be so if you saw the last video i um made with uchechi about um canadian baby and all how many of you have said to have canadian babies <laughs> So yeah, at the end of the video, I, you know, like made a note to say that, yeah, the video was becoming too long. And because the conversation was so interesting, there was no part I could cut out. So this is the second part of that video. I think this is about 20 something minutes. And yes, it's also as interesting as the first part. So if you enjoyed the first part, you're definitely going to enjoy this other part. So let's get right into the video. So I told him. Yeah. Let's not take chances. After all, medical service is free. Yeah. So let's just walk in and then so they check. So now that you mentioned it, so all these processes, everything, everything is free. free. You didn't have to pay anything. Mm -mm. Nothing. Even then, even your stay in the hospital. Nothing. Even the fact that you decided to do serious session. Nothing. Nothing. Guys, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. nothing. You don't have to pay anything. You don't have to pay anything except for your gynecologist. Except like there are some. Um, medications she needs to buy so she can then write them out and then and you buy them you have insurance, insurance you it can cover a certain percentage of it so that's just it so aside that you're not paying Guys, anything I'm yeah you people should advise me in the comments because <laughs> <laughs> something like uh -uh. It's, it's a very sweet experience honestly wow it's a very sweet experience so you don't have to pay anything so I told my husband okay let's shall go now after all one open it's not like Nigeria mm -hmm. it's okay they'll tell us to be on k so we just went and then they checked me and then we went in the evening and you know they are always on standby they are always doctors on shifts no matter the time you go it's not the one that you just go and then you see them sleeping they are always on standby always a lot or you see one movie they are watching movie and then just in chatting away chewing gums and all of no they are very very professional, professional. here yeah so we went that evening we got there around 7 p.m and then they checked me and then they were like okay that's um it seems you have a fever and um we think that's what is triggering baby's heartbeat baby's oh. heartbeat is rising so um do you mind us admitting you so we can watch you and then we help treat your fever and all of that i was like Fine, yeah i'm not doing anything at home uh, who will say no Ooh, so you mind. I, 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 I don't ask you because they need your consent yes, right yes, yes. so they admitted me and my husband stayed the night also with me they gave us our room and then they started treatment immediately yeah so and then when we were going we also took our doctors my doctors and people and then like my husband knew he said oh since we're let's just carry baby's bag wow. yeah and this was january ending of january and then i was supposed to expect baby like first or second week of february yeah, february know, 14th in short know, you know they used to say that um the EDD, like two weeks before. before two weeks after yeah so we took baby's things but baby things were in the car we didn't come out with them so they admitted us and then started watching baby give, giving me treatments drips all those things and then that's that's wednesday night at 12 p.m on the 12 a.m on the dot my water broke and then i told my husband i feel like i'm i'm peeing on myself and i know i'm not too sick that i wouldn't know when i'm no, peeing on myself so this this kind of urine gosh and then i know that most movies i watch you see gush of urine like you see like gushing out there but this was not it was like not like that plenty yeah but i know that i was passing out some urine and then i told him like since my water has broken and then he said how do you feel i told him and we had to press the bell and the nurses came i told them and then they gave me some sanitary towels to wear yes, so that they would check and all of that so they were like yeah truly your water has broken and then was Ali but started and we we're excited and we we're meeting baby very soon <laughs> <laughs> we became very excited so that was how labor started and i think because of the fever right so it was not it will progress and stop progress and stop but yeah. when when it was around i think around 2 p.m the next day that's thursday and it's like 12 a.m um, since 12 a.m of that same morning oh, since, or that same oh, thursday Wednesday. no no 12 a.m on on, on 12 a.m is already the new day so it's thursday yeah so till till 2 PM. so i was still in six centimeters so that i just told them fast. it's really fast yeah that was fast fast mm -hmm. wow because um, and that's another thing 
when we the reason I'm saying it's was fast because mm. I'm comparing with other people. No, oh, really. That was fast, six centimeters for a first timer. That, mm. that was not bad. Mm. I felt it was too long that because that pain. Because of the pain. Ah, <laughs> ah. You know they used to say that you will forget. No, no, no. It's not that like you pain. forget. You just decide to just you know overlook it. Mm. That pain. It was not funny. <laughs> It was not funny, but they were very nice nurses there, the encouraging you. The mm. They will ask you, do you want eyes? You want, I, I think I had eyes. I had eyes. I don't know how that makes that made me feel, but I think I felt better. Oh. You know, yeah. So I had eyes. And, chewed eyes. Yeah, I chewed eyes. So I had eyes, and um, I was trying not to shout too. Yeah. So I was trying to reserve my energy. But when when baby's heartbeat was going up, I didn't want to take chances. So I told them I, I want to have a, an elective CS. So they asked me, they, they, they encouraged me actually to try wait. So, but I didn't want to. I was not very comfortable with it. So um, they wheeled me to the theater, the theater. And yeah, so I had my baby. <laughs> so funny enough, I had to sleep. So for some reasons, yeah, I had to sleep. And then when I woke up, my husband was already with baby and then they wheeled me to the recovery room that's very spacious big recovery room that you can entertain your family friends people that come to this and all of that so um so that was the first time i saw baby no before i think no after they brought out baby they gave baby to my husband so when i regained consciousness they brought baby kept baby on my chest and then they wheeled both of us to the recovery room yes it was a very beautiful experience oh, that's yeah. so beautiful <laughs> So beautiful. Very beautiful. <clears throat> me, I'm wishing. Mm. Like, if I did this, maybe I was going to watch this video. Be like, this <laughs> you, you want to give it a trial? Where? Eh? Yeah, no. All this is not saying is joke. <laughs> <laughs> we'll help you. You have support here. We'll I help you. Many, uh -huh, and, okay, so now that you spoke about support. Yeah. Have you ever, yeah, I, you've been mentioning that you, you have um, sisters back home in Nigeria that yeah. you were with them, they are pregnant and all. So comparing their yeah, pregnancy and after delivery mm -hmm. in Nigeria and what you had here, mm -hmm. which one do you, would you have preferred? Which one do you think is... So we have gone past the everything was free and now post, post like after labor. Post after, so what, which one do you think is... Well, for every reason, <clears throat> I think every every part, everybody that gives birth abroad will want to prefer recovery in Nigeria process because um, recovery in Nigeria, you have like a lot of hands, you can get a house help, your mom will be there, your nanny, your brother-in-law, your like, little yeah, sisters. I'm telling you, all you just do is just sleep, wake up, eat, sleep, wake up, eat, take care of baby. baby. No, feed the baby and then they will even take care of baby. So you just feed baby, eat, sleep. So, but here, here, um, it's just you, but not like just you per se, because it depends on the kind of person you are and the kind of environment you find yourself, right? So, like, um, I and my husband didn't know anybody here, right? But we had very good support system here. We have very good people here. We met very good people here, church colleagues friends you know they really and you know time is money like you said when we started this year but people actually took out their time to come around help out you know so i think for everybody that will be that, that is um or that decides to give birth abroad you know when you come abroad it's very good that you you find a community. a community where you feel you fit in you know if you are a church person do belongs your to your do your church thing like do it do it unto yourself and unto god you know then and if you are a muslim you know belong to your muslim community where traditionalist you know belong to where you're supposed to belong to because you really need their support when things like this happen so guys it's not just so i think you're talking about parenting mm -hmm. community even marriage mm -hmm. for you to have a marriage that will last mm -hmm. you also need to surround yourself with people that also want their marriage to mm -hmm. last that's important yeah but even now, she's talking about childbirth and all, and here we are still talking about community. Mm -hmm. So Canada is not a place where you come and you be you like, say you I want to be a loner. I don't want to talk mm -hmm. to other people. Mm -hmm. You need to build a community. Mm -hmm. you, need, you need to have that support around you because at every step of the way, you actually need to have mm -hmm. the support. Or yeah. you need to be overwhelming. Even though they will not always be there, right? You but know, they have their families. You need to call yeah, they will always... Call. Like, like you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
I cannot respond. <laughs> you see, I'm not, I'm not, I didn't call you because I, I didn't just, I'm not the person that wants to stress somebody, but like, she calls me several times, tell me, if you need something, please call me. We're just, my ass is just torn <laughs> through, please, you can always call and all of that. So, but, I think that uh, helps. So um, the fact that you know that there's somebody, somebody that you, that you can always call, you can call if you need something and all of that yeah people people were really there for us like it was you know you will feel it at some point but at some point you also know that at least people tried yeah, yeah people were really there but in nigeria even going to the market everything you always find help until you're up and about and then you are fine but here also it's still very possible if you belong to a community yeah. so this question i asked now i think this is what i i can take away from you yeah because the, the delivery process <clears throat> would prefer to be here like the whole hospital and everything was mm -hmm. sweet experience but you can also have something that looks like the nigerian experience mm -hmm. factor, depending mm -hmm. on the kind of people you surround yourself with mm -hmm. so somebody should take that mm -hmm. hold it in your left hand mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. So I was I was one of the questions I was going to ask was how much did the whole process cost? But she has answered. She mm, said it costs nothing. Nothing. As a matter of fact, that they used to pack their up at home for yes. Now, as a matter day. of fact, even okay for people that give birth through CS right here, they will give you. There is this kind of um panties that they give for CS people. They will give you those panties so that the liners will not interfere with your incision. You know your regular pants might be too tight yeah. that you know that place might start pinning you so instead of the way we do it in nigeria you start tying wrap up and down mm -hmm. or you start wearing a dio polo <laughs> <laughs> so they'll give you yeah so they'll give you like some kind of there's this cutting pants these disposable pants is very comfy mm -hmm. and then they'll provide that for free for you every day they come stock up your washroom clean your washroom stock it up with new set of disposable pants They'll give you your pads. They'll give. They'll provide diaper for baby. Every you don't need to pay anything, guys. Provide guys. diaper for baby. They'll provide diaper for baby for free. Oh. For free. They'll feed you morning, afternoon, night, and then give you snacks in between. And then you can also request for food. And then if if breast milk is not out, they'll also feed baby some milk. And then funny enough, at night if you need to sleep, just press the bell by your bed, and then nurses will come and take baby, so you sleep at night. <laughs> if you need to sleep, just press the bell by your bed, and then nurses will come. You tell them, Can you please take the baby away? I need to have some rest. Oh my God. And then they'll take the baby, and then you'll sleep and have your rest. So, is it, I, I, it's, it's an experience that, that is very good. Wow. It's very good. It's ordinary hearing about it. It's I'm, very I'm good. A, I'm, I'm falling in love already. Like, really? It's very good, yeah. And aside what they even serve in the hospital, you can still request for whatever you want. Like, you know that it's they, they can afford that to is, give yeah, in the hospital. Like, the normal yeah, hospital. schedule, like hot water or whatever. Though, be at liberty to wow. respond to that, yeah. Hmm. Guys, guys, mm -hmm. you want to give back to Canada? Can you hear it? Mm -hmm. I've not heard any bad reviews since mm -hmm. we've been talking about this. This is, this is really mm -hmm. nice okay yeah so i think we've okay so we've um spoken about um delivery and all that and how was your husband too like support and all that hmm. did you get support because that's one of the things african women we have issues with like so yeah and it's most times when we look at it it's not their fault it's the way they were raised the way mm -hmm. they were brought up so i was how was the support from your husband if you don't mind sharing <laughs> it was very supportive because my husband is the kind of person that can adapt to different situations, right? Okay, he so, adapts to... mm -hmm. so he was from the pregnancy stage, he started adapting, right? At least he made some meals for me during the pregnancy stage, yeah. He made some meal and um you know he knew it was only two of us, mm -hmm. so the, there was a need for us to adapt and he was very supportive, yeah. Very, 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 very and yeah, that's, that's, that's something I think I've said this. I'm, I'm very sure some, some at some point, maybe some husbands will be like, What what does Christy have? It's not like I have anything against African men. But I just feel that some men need, really need to step up when it comes to coming. Actually, out. actually feel it's just sheer wickedness for you to just leave your wife to do all things, all the when things you in have the house. A couples meeting we held in church recently. Couples 
there was one total man yeah yeah i was yeah. of that man that they i think mm -hmm. we talk about mm -hmm. like we even do marriage mm -hmm. marriage discussion it's just sheer wickedness especially if you're abroad and then you know she doesn't have any so let me, help let me share this story with you guys so there was this person that they said they came to um they relocated here they had children mm -hmm. already. <clears throat> they had children already the wife got a job before the husband mm -hmm. and he stays at home and then he stays at home the wife needs to get ready and go to work but then she's still the one that wake up to cook the meals get the children ready and all the while and the she still take them sleeping. to school the husband will be sleeping <clears throat> and still pick them up back from daycare or back from them. school or so and then this particular morning she asked the husband to say excuse me sir can you it was even a request mm -hmm. can you help me bait or even maybe it's she has bait the child help me dress him up or mm -hmm. something. and the guy <laughs> got angry mm -hmm. now what kind of rubbish is this why would she be that's disrespect mm -hmm. what kind of you are asking for respect i don't understand like i don't understand because it's please when you are coming abroad just drop all those mentalities all those even if i'm telling you even if you are <clears throat> excuse me even if you are one million years older than your wife just drop all those things back in nigeria when coming except you, you just all you remain in nigeria i'm telling you yes, down to the level to say okay i want to go to jerusalem mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't remember uh, that you're one million years older you know you now know you're a chief yeah you remember you're a big man in nigeria please there's no there's no big man here it's just sheer wickedness you know if you're coming abroad you're coming abroad learn to learn to respect the person that you're coming abroad with learn to respect the person that you're coming abroad with learn to respect the person that you're coming abroad learn to help out with help out your wife yeah except you want her to die yeah because it's stress really between you go to work she goes to work she takes care of the kids she takes the kids to daycare and you are at home and then after work she drives to get the kids from daycare bring them back home she, oh, she also you, makes supper no 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 and then she'll still do her mother duty she at do night. wifely duties if she does not and, do it she's not submissive and they will call meeting from nigeria they'll do this thing they will quote bible <laughs> you must not, what's that what's that by this you must I have not, submit um, to your husband no there is one you must not um, hold yourself back your body is not your own it's, oh my god <laughs> and yes yeah, no it's very the, bad i actually um, read a research that two things are the like the highest things that causes divorce for people black immigrants and those two things are sex money. and money money must be there and of course when when you're talking about sex it's the woman that is saying no because hey, they don't keep i'm, yes I'm now, stressed please yes just, now this time to sleep mm -hmm. let me sleep mm. i think what most people are doing and they do timetable <laughs> because at the end of the day that works so if and the only way the timetable will even work is if on the day when we are supposed to have it i'm not stressed because timetable can scatter uh, no now no now the day you're supposed to have it if you now go and stress yourself that means you're at fault now how? so if if so if, if you know that making um you want to do if you know that on the day you're supposed to do it you want to do a for euro and you want to do a mala then why not do indomie why not do noodles or do spag something less stressful you know just work I with the time to plan then that means he's the one looking for trouble then so i think that was what most people do. i think it was one relationship because actually this thing I, when I it comes it from. to these things you actually need to when it comes to money and sex mm -hmm. it's, it's an issue there has to be a communication mm. and a mutual agreement and if timetable is the way out for some families why not please do mm. the timetable mm -hmm. because really those two things when you ask because sometimes it will be difficult to actually pinpoint they will say irreconcilable differences but the two things that will be the irreconcilable differences mm. we actually dig deep is these two things is these two things it's really an issue it's, uh, it is it is and yes they will say uh, when, when um black people relocate abroad especially the women they become they will always say it's the women they forget become, it they are they not submissive anymore women. but it's not they are just they are just stressed, mm. just stressed. so yes if you have i don't know <coughs> if, if you don't if you're not following me on instagram i don't know why you need to go and follow me on instagram <laughs> <laughs> because this what i'm about to say is something i'm sure instagram people have seen so i want some native words to church and i think recently just now that the weather have changed i'm saying picture i have to take a back seat now take it on nice pictures if you have seen me in any ankara native yeah and any ankara native i think I've, i got two ankara natives. Mm -hmm. this is the 
the brain behind those natives. <laughs> she makes if you are in Saskatoon or in Canada, yeah, you can Canada ship can anywhere. Yeah. If you are in Canada and you need native wears, she's your plug. I'll leave her. Is your Instagram up and running now? Yeah, it's it's up, but I think by because of some change, change in environment, change in you know motherhood and all of that. Yeah, but it should be running fully said next year yeah but my instagram is up but you should be but running you have, yeah you have pictures of your things yeah already. i have pictures of my things already. so i'll leave our instagram handle in the comments in the description in the comments you find i'll leave it everywhere i know you can search you should go follow on instagram she makes really nice um native wears talk to us have you been doing this um fashion thing before you left nigeria or it was after you got here no so i i've always been a fashion person right so when i knew that i needed to just take the fashion thing to another level because i love wearing good clothes and most of the times when when i take my clothes to tailor i get i like they just beat down my expectations so i just needed okay why not i learn this learn thing for myself out. and then for other people you know so Actually, I went to one of the best, one of the top five fashion schools in Nigeria. Oh, wow. Yeah, Prudential Fashion Academy. Oh, I so, that yeah. So, I went to Prudential Fashion Academy, then, and then, um, and then we relocated. Yeah, and I've already, I've already been doing the fashion thing. Yeah, but when I needed to, like, brush up to upgrade my skills, you know, to be very um, independent, so I went to Prudential Fashion Academy. Yeah, so it's been something I've been doing for a long time coming now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you and the fact is the the truth about the, the when uh, before I went, and I think that's one of the things somebody said. So somebody who saw me wearing one, I think the yellow and the black one. And this one's like, oh, this is nice. Where did you get it? And I told her she was like, ah, she when she saw your things, she when she started seeing, she mm -hmm. was like, ah, it would be expensive. And I was like, I, you should even ask her. Ask how so much? Ask first, because and I think that's one other thing when we hear African, African. things. Whether it's native or whether it's food, our first instinct is, it's oh, expensive. it's expensive. But really, they are really, really very, affordable. very affordable. Yeah, very affordable. And I, I think from her, I've learned that. So even when I realized that it would be too much for my budget, I'll still ask. Yeah. So yes, is there any other thing you'd like to tell us? Okay. Um. Yeah, I think we needed to talk about um, employment insurance. And that is one thing that, you know, one thing we hear about Canada and giving birth is, uh. um, when you come here, um, you, you can have as much as one year maternity leave. One year, six months also. You can have one, up to one uh -huh, year, six months. Uh -huh. 18 months, uh -huh. you know, just taking care of the baby. baby. But one thing we really hear about is how much you, how you do you earn during those times uh -huh. of staying at home. Uh -huh. You see your employer that will be paying you for the one year. How does it work? Tell us so the thing, is, the thing is, if you are looking at coming into Canada, you are pregnant or you are looking at coming into Canada and then you know that you're going to be pregnant or you want to be pregnant when you come. It's when you come, try to get a job. If you are in a professional field and you need to do some professional exams and all of that and you don't see that happening very fast, period to when you become too heavy to work or, you know, try to get any job. Like there are very readily available jobs that you can do, you know, so that you can have okay you need to have at least 600 hours of work 600 working hours you need to have like 600 working hours to be able to qualify for an ei so do you apply when you give birth yes yeah, so i think the your work does it for you so it depends now it doesn't matter the kind of work you do provided you've had that 600 working hours anywhere any work at all so you take your leave before you go for your leave, they give you some documentations to do. So when you do those documentation, I think they send it to the government. They send it from their own end to the government and then they'll do their own feeling, you know, they'll, they'll be able to satisfy that you've worked so, so, so your, as... your payment still comes from your employer? No, it doesn't come from my employer. It, it comes, comes from, from the, the government. government. Yes, it comes from the government. But I think they are in alliance with the employer. And like, how do they determine how much to pay you? Um, is it dependent on your salary? It yeah, it depends on how much. I think they calculate it based on how much you earn and how many hours you've worked. Okay. Yeah, those two factors come into play. So there is no, it's not like a, there's a fixed price or there's a fixed amount of how much they pay everybody. So how much you've worked and then how much you earn. Okay. 
so monthly vitamins so i think they do they put them they accumulate them together i think they do like the first six months or the last six months i'm not too sure about this information but i i think they put those um, factors into consideration and then they are able to get the aggregates and then you know pay you so what month. this means is if you don't work up to 600 hours before you give birth mm -mm. then you don't have there's no money coming in from anywhere even if it's 5.99 hours wow Mm -hmm. There's no money coming yeah, in from anywhere. So yes, you've heard that um, if you go to Canada, you can have. If you are living in Canada, you can have um, maternity leave as much as one year or one year six, six months. months. But if you are going to be getting money during that time, mm -hmm. you need to have worked for. So that means for people that come in really heavy, they, they can't. There's no way for them to get money because it's the time remaining for them to give birth because they can't work that 600 hours and please you shouldn't you shouldn't because of that go and stress yourself and your baby you know your health do first what, yeah do, yeah, what, do what works can. for you after all in nigeria they stay three months and then they go back to work so mm -hmm. it's not like it's not compulsory that you must stay that one year oh, yeah, or one year yeah. six months but that's just what is recommended so that baby is fine and then they are also fine before you go back to work yeah. right so but if you find out that okay oh, you are um you're very heavy and you can't meet up just do what works for you and then you can resume your work you anytime and i think at mm -hmm. the end of the day the government still has yeah child benefits child for your child benefits. Mm -hmm. and there's also something about um, employment benefit like for people that are not maybe working there's something mm -hmm. like yeah or people that are earning maybe the husband cannot apply maybe his earning is not enough to sustain the family maybe when the wife cannot work mm -hmm. there's always a way out there's always a way out it's just that like it's more comfortable if, mm -hmm. if you can, you can just can try it. to work yeah mm -hmm. just try to work yeah that's, that's most good. most people will not tell you but that's just it wow. that's and good. you know we love freebies so you are sitting at home and you are yeah, getting yeah, money <laughs> it's, it's very sweet but just try to work if you can yeah yeah, so one other thing we're talking, we're just just thinking about is the health card. What's the importance of the health card in all, in all the process? I think like that's like the very first um, step that a new immigrant needs to take, right? So the first step is to get your health card if you are pregnant, even if you are not, right? Get your health card and then from there you can start looking for a family doctor. And if you can't find a family doctor, please go ahead to look for a gynecologist that can take care of you and your baby then but if you actually need medical attention and i think health card now takes some time like us took about a month or so i think has took quite a long uh -huh. time so. so if if um your health card hasn't come and then you need medical attention you can go ahead to pay as at that point you now have to pay because you don't have a health card so but when your health card comes you can file for claim mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then get your money back and get your money back mm -hmm. so you and all this process we're you know talking about is for people that come in as permanent residents we don't know what the process is like people that come in as students visa or visitors or I visitors don't know. visa mm -mm. i think it's every other thing apart from either permanent residents and um citizens I think every other way is no, quite expensive. Hmm. Even students. I don't know. I might, I might make inquiries. Who do I know that is a student? Well, most students will not come here. I want to come and have a baby. Because if they look at it, I'm sure it will be expensive. Mm, and because they want to... with their workload and everything. Yeah. Because schooling here is not even very it's not funny. not very funny. Uh -uh. Coupled with the school expenses itself, mm -hmm. are, and the fact that they cannot even do more than 20 hours per week. Per week. You know what's on top of that? Had <laughs> baby. <laughs> mm. I don't know what the process will be like for people that work. I, I don't know. Students. So that medic that health card is very important. Very important. Then you can always get your claim back when you get your health card. For every expenses you mm. made. If you're a PR. Thank you very much. This was a very, very wonderful conversation. I know that when we started, you were like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was a very lovely conversation. Thank, thank you for you. coming today. Thank, thank you. you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So guys, thanks for watching. If you have other questions, drop them in the comment section. I'll be sure to get my answers from her and I'll tell you guys. Or maybe she will answer herself. So yes, if you have any further questions, drop them in the comment section. Either she answers or I respond. Thank you so much. Until we meet in the next video, have a very beautiful life, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Thank you. That was Thank nice. You. <laughs>